Hey guys, I'm Dina. This is Creative Minds Homeschool. Welcome back to my channel. And I'm sitting in a squiffle chair. So I'm probably going to look like a wiggle worm. That's my disclaimer. I apologize in advance. Um, but I'm just going to wanted to share with you a quick urine review. Just kind of tell you how our year went overall. And we are still wrapping up school. We will be wrapping up for the next month. Um, after this week, we will actually have a two-week break. Um, and then we will come back and have four day weeks, the last three weeks of June, and then the first week of July, we should finish up. So, um, basically, I've been reflecting on this year a lot. And um, it has been an, a, an interesting year because it's probably the best year we've ever had, just if looking back. Uh, there are reasons for that. Keeping in mind that whenever it was a kindergartner and first grader, I had toddler preschooler people. That was special and not easy. And I also feel like I started him way too early, heavily academic, and he just wasn't ready for it. So it was a lot of struggle there. Um, then when my girls hit kindergarten, I was pregnant at 40 and um, I was sick for the first like 22 weeks of my pregnancy and um, it was a real struggle <laughs> once I got pregnant that year just well it was hard and then I was pregnant that's not easy either um, <laughs> just in general without being sick it was not easy and then um, the next year when the girls were in first grade, I had a newborn and like postpartum -y stuff that comes along with that um, for a good long while. So um, I feel like this is the first year that I only have one toddler um, in the mix. My kid, my other ones are a little bit older, and um, so and this is the first year we've ever not switched curriculum somewhere along the way. So I was very happy about that. That is just rare. That is that has never happened, I don't think, in our whole homeschool experience, except maybe that first year that I was too stubborn to switch because I thought it I thought it was my kiddo, but it really was the curriculum, I think. <sighs> maybe a combination of both, but you know. So um I am just I'm I'm happy with where we've gotten to so far. I'm very happy with where my kids are with reading and math. Um I feel like we are learning the spelling rules right now, which is not easy. Um, I feel like I have one, maybe two natural spellers. I'm a natural speller. So even though I have struggled with reading, spelling and grammar have always been very easy for me. So um, it's kind of been interesting having kiddos that it's not natural for Spelling is just not natural to them. That is a hurdle to overcome. Um, I have concluded through, and this is funny, I just feel like this is how the Lord kind of works and helps you out. I've been praying about, just I pray all the time about the struggle that we have in homeschool. Um, I've mentioned before to y'all, somebody's always the popcorn in our house. Um, and, you know, I doubt that I'm the only one that has that. Maybe you just have super, super cooperative children. I don't have those. And um, I just don't. I don't have that brand of kiddo. Or, or you know, I'm not saying that uh, there aren't things I, don't, I could. There are probably things that we could tweak to have a better level of cooperativeness. I'm sure there are things. Um, in fact, I know there are things. Such as spending more one-on-one -on -one time with them. Um, I just need more energy to be able to do that and it hasn't happened yet so um but it's some it's a goal of mine for next year and for this summer i definitely want to invest the time because i feel like we need to invest in that their in our one-on-one -on -one relationships with them and then we're gonna naturally have more cooperativeness from them during school time so um but with that also, okay, so I've concluded that some of the struggle that I've had with my oldest 
is probably an underlying issue with writing. I've told y'all writing has been a struggle, but I really think that I've figured out that there is a true like dysgraphia issue going on with him. Um, and the way I concluded that, <laughs> Jenny over at Unexpected Joy, check out her channel if you're not familiar, but um, she's, she's mentioned that she's going to be working with her child on that, and I just, I've heard her say it several times, she's mentioned what she's doing about it, that kind of thing, and I just, I mean, I, I was listening, but, you know, I'm like, well, that's for her kid and whatever, I'm not, you know, it's not my kid, so I'm just not real, real, super, super paying attention, but when I gave him the California Achievement Test, and I saw that his growth in spelling and like identifying spelling errors and capitalization and punctuation, that kind of thing. Um, that was a clue. Um, the fact that handwriting, there has not really been a marked improvement from day one till now. It's the same, it's messy. And um, a lot of times there's still not spaces between words like there should be. Um, there are just letters left out left and right. That um, there's, it's just like there's an obvious gap between what's in here and what comes out here. Um, and I say that too because like one of the indicators is you have a child that's highly verbal and that can just tell you lots of intelligent things, but to put it, it just doesn't come out. And now he he can write and he's he's done before where he's written amazing things down, but you need him to tell you what they say a lot of the time, if that makes sense, because there's so much there's letters missing or they're spelled like by sound, but it's just hard to decipher cuz sometimes they're just squished together and that kind of thing. It's just difficult. So, um, just, I feel like all of these clues have been there the whole time, and just all of a sudden, I had a veil be lifted, and I went, whoa, like, I really think this is a true issue. Like, it's not just stubbornness, you know. Um, so, that, that, that true just reluctance to write, um, I think it's because, like, like, what, from the little bit I read so far, um, Basically, it takes so much energy to make it when it when it does come out neat. It's so tedious, like so much concentration and energy goes into it that they just kind of, you know. So with his work, you might get one, like if there's two columns, the first column might be look pretty good. I'm like, yes. And then the second column, you, you can just see where the fatigue just got to him. And it's just like, oh, you know. Um, so that has been like an epiphany over here. And um, so now I'm kind of researching where are we gonna go from here. Um, I bought some of the materials that she's gonna be using just cause this lady looks like she, it's Diane Craft, I think that's her name. Um, it looks like she has experience and knowledge and knows how to, what she calls unblock the glitches of the different learning gates, um, writing being one of several. And there's actually four, I think, parts of the writing issue. I think the issue my child has is spatial, visual spatial issue. So um, we're gonna start working on that next year. And um, I still need to watch the video I bought about it and read the manual. Um, I just have to get some time together to do that. And when my brain is functioning, like I would do it now, but my brain, I know the way I read, I wouldn't be able to take it in. So I have to wait till a day when I'm fresh and I can really concentrate on it and give the time it needs to it. Um, but yeah, so I feel like going forward for next year, I feel like some pressure coming off just because, um, I just, I know that there's something there that needs to be addressed. It's not just, you're a stubborn kiddo. <laughs> I need to always conclude that it's not the kid, okay? So if you have, if you're having a struggling time, conclude that it's not the kid's fault, 
okay? Um, it's truly. I feel like when you when you put when you get what works for them, they naturally like I've seen that with reading. It was I had a reluctant reader. He was a reluctant reader reader first. I don't think he was ready. Um, when he got ready and it clicked, boy, he's just he's taken off. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say about that. And I guess so. Our year in review. It's been a good year. Um, I know right now, about this time of year, every year it seems like there's this controversy that gets kicked up again over the good and the beautiful. Um, that I just got through yesterday, just grappling with that struggle within myself. And um, so I will just put a little blurb on here about that. Um, I chalk it up to personal conviction. And um, I feel like for my family, I don't want to say I was led to that curriculum, but in a way I do feel like that. I feel like at the time we were struggling. I was struggling emotionally. Like I was having a hard time. Was that last year? Postpartum me time? You know, it was just a bad time. I needed something to lighten my load. And I found that this curriculum, time-wise it works for us. Um, many, many, many levels it works for us. And um, I know a lot of people have convictions about it that they, they feel like it's not for them to use. I am very open to the Holy Spirit. And I, I can tell you that because there are, I have lots of personal convictions um, in my own personal life. Things about, I, I have strong convictions about the things we are entertained by in our home and anywhere. Um, you know, God has just pinpointed things and said, I'm not happy with that. That is not for you. This is not for you. You don't go here. You don't do this. I am open to, if he should say, don't use that, I am all about, yes, okay, show me the next thing because that's what I need to know. Um, I, I'm sure I'm like everyone. I would imagine unless you just are firmly set in one curriculum and not going to ever plan to change, I'm pretty open. I mean, I'm constantly, I'm always looking at, if someone mentions, oh, I use this, I go look it up. Well, I just want to see what that looks like. And, uh, you know, so I'm very open. If the Lord would lead us a different direction, I'm all about that. Um, right now, I just, I feel like for our family, it's working the way we need it to. And, um, you know, like today in our language arts, we, we just got through reading Sarah Plain and Tall. And there was this blurb in our book about, um, about how it's a modern classic. And, you know, it has good messages and um, there's nothing bad in it and whatever. And it talked about, but there's something missing. What's missing? And it's God and prayer. And she mentioned that, in the 1800s, God and prayer were often mentioned in, in the writing back then. But now, because it's a modern classic, you don't have that. and But it still has good messages and is a worthy book to read. And um, it concluded by saying there are, are books that have bad messages, books that have good messages, good books that have great messages, and the best. And she said the best is scripture. You know, and I was like, I, I agree with everything that said. And um, it aligns with what I feel my convictions are about the things we watch, the things we read, um, what we're entertained by. So I just, it somehow enmeshes and, um, you know, everyone has their own, they have, you have to answer to God for your own self, you know, and, um. I have to answer to him for ours. And I, I just feel like, I just, I don't know. I wish there wasn't such a, a controversial thing about it because it puts a damper. I was so excited. I had peace and joy about everything I ordered. I've been getting curriculum ready for the new year. And then all of a sudden, I this controversy just came back up again. And I'm just like, I get I get other people's objections to it. I do. I understand. 
I just don't have another option, I feel like, right now. There's not a direction to go. This is what it is, you know. Um, but I'm open, so whatever. Anyway, that's. I just felt like I wanted to add that on here. Um, just in case you're wondering, I, ha I haven't put out or what we're going to use next year. That's probably the next video coming up here before too long. But um, I am, that's one of the things we will be using again just because it worked for our family. So um, I hope that you are gearing up for your summer. Hope you're going to have a good one. I would love to hear your comments, your questions, whatever, anything. Put it down below. I'd be glad to chitty chat with you on the comments and I hope you like this video. Feel free to give it some love and I'll see you in the next one.